In last video I've created a virus. In this video I will show you step by step how it's working. In this video you will see how BASIC's malware analysis looks like. I decided for analyze assembler virus that you could better understand tools like disassemblers and debuggers. But first you have to know that using debugger could be dangerous. Because every single instruction will be executed on your PC. This file will be running by another program, but it doesn't mean that it simulates OS. It only allows you to see inside that file and trace execution. You could miss one function call and destroy your system, if you try to debugging real malware. Everything shown in this video is rather safe. I'm analyze virus which I've created in last video, so I am exactly knows what is doing. To remind you, it's overrides exe file in the same folder. But for viewers, saver option will be debugging one of explanation codes if someone wants to try it. Let's load virus into AIDA. And let's imagine that we don't know anything about this file. First, we see nice graph of start function from entry point. To see how many other functions are in this file, we have to look here. Start and two other functions. And that's true if we compare this to virus code because first function is infect and second self-read. Hex view gives us hex view of all section, in this case tree, data which contains all text strings and verse. code, which contains exe code of virus. And import, section informing which DLL function this app uses. Structures informs us of structures uses in app. Like we can see here is win find data, so app probably looking for files. And like I said in previous video of FASM virus example, offset of 2C contains file name. Imports shows every single DLL function that app uses. Like we can see here is name of function and DLL name that contains this function. We have memory allocated by malloc getting path of file by get command line, file EO operation and searching for files. That's a lot of useful informations for a start. Like you can see IDA shows loaded functions in the same order as declared in source code. It's probably virus. Now we know more or less what this app is doing. And we can calculate the risk. Now you will understand why I decide to disassemble first the assembler version. Let's see sections in plain text and virus code to comparison. Like you can see, IDA gives us almost exactly the same code what I wrote in previous video. So, it's logical that if someone knows Assembler, is able to read this code like in source code file before compilation.
Static analysis ends here. I've done code overview in previous video. Now, let's see how dynamic analysis looks like. Let's start from start. So first what I have to do is breakpoint. Something what stops executing program and wait for next instruction. For example next step or play rest of code. If program is stopped, you can see register values or look on stack. Let's set BP on function call and see how the deleting quote marks look like. So in start function, first task is getting path name by get comment line. Then check if it contains quote marks, and if they are, delete them. Let's see how it's look from processor side. Breaking points are set by F2. Next step is F8 and F9 start rest of program till next BP. Let's start debugging. We have information that this may be dangerous. Only the debugger don't inform you about this. Code execution stops at breakpoint. If not that breakpoint, various will be executed as normal exe and could destroy your system. That's why it is so dangerous. Let's step to next instruction. EIX register should change and now contains path to file. Yes, it's whole file path with quote marks ended by null byte. Next instruction is saving file name as local var. Then comparing first string byte to quote mark sign. And if they are the same, Jump to next graph pointed by red arrow. So here various increments offset path by one and now path starts without unwanted sign. Here is call for a string length, which return given argument in ECX register. In EIX is string length. Decrement string length of 1 and adding it to path offset will be pointing exactly on unwanted quote mark. And of course, null byte to delete. Rewinding path to start and saving. Then we have intro by print. Path to ECX register as a self-read argument and call to function. So like I said, if you missed any function call, you could be in troubles. Like you can see, it's not that hard to miss. So let's see how self-reading is looking like. Set breakpoint on the first instruction. Self-read isn't complicated, it's just standard file operation procedure. Opening by create file, 
allocate memory, read to it, and close file. Let's see how it's working. All that pushes are arguments of create file. Then virus checking if returning value isn't zero. If file is open, then virus allocate memory of size of virus. Then virus checks if the value returned by malloc is zero. If it is, then executing steps. If return value isn't zero, it is pointer to allocated memory, so virus saves that value in global mode. Here virus loading his code into memory. Then comparing read bytes to virus size. If these numbers are same, then closing file, return 1 and returning to start function. If they are different, virus exits returning 0. We are back in start function. If self-read returns 1, virus continues. If self-read returns 0, it go to this graph and exits. And anything goes to this graph is exiting virus, like this end of searching files. Here virus shows two first bytes of itself to prove that self-read is successfully ended. And we can see into that buffer and see virus in memory. Here is loop of finding files. There is checking small extension and big extension. Let's set breakpoints of beginning of every graph. Red arrows graphs, executing when the virus can't find exe file. Going to inform user about that fact. It's example debug virus. In real viruses, in this point, virus just jumps to loop start and this graph doesn't exist. If virus find exe, it's executing green arrows graphs. Let's set breakpoint at beginning to see how dangerous could be miss a function call. So, we don't do breakpoint in infection function for now. And believe me or not, function call could be hidden in code. And even if you trace it step by step, you could miss that call. Hidden calls starts when every shellcode and virus contains call and pop just after function starts. To take, for example, string address from code to get address function. And many of AV system is able to find these instructions. So, if you notice calls to data section, or call to some weird looking code section, you can be sure that it's probably hide and call. There will be more tricks about this in videos of buffer overflow, polyformic viruses, shellcode creating and preventing disassembling. Like you see one file is already infected and you won't even notice. Don't worry, much worse thing could happen, like infecting MPR for example. Now let's hit breakpoint at start of infection and trace executing. And there is nothing fascinating, only opening file, writing virus to that file and closing it. 
We have also information about status of infection. Here we could see whole WinFind data structure with file name, to that exe in this case. File is already open. Infection is just right file. Here virus comparing created bytes to writeed bytes. If numbers are the same, then we have information about infection. So, it was last function to analyze, and now there is nothing left to do. The virus will continue infect files until it checks the entire directory, and then stops. Thanks for watching, stay safe.